What's good, y'all? What's going on? I see Jim Ursay is out here. Can't kick his habits. Cannot kick his habits. All right, let's get to the elephant in the room. Colts team owner Jim Ursay was found unresponsive, cold to the touch, and gasping for air during a suspected overdose on December 8th. According to Carmel Police Documents, now, the Colts already are trying to spin it and say that he had some kind of respiratory illness. Come on, bruh. Nobody's buying that. You had a, you got a history of substance abuse. I mean, NFL fined you years ago because you was out there wilding. Like, you was acting like some kind of junkie. Now, look, we all got flaws. Half of America's on some kind of drug or narcotic. My thing is, your circle. How did this even get out to the public? Who in your circle or who is working for you is telling your business? This happened in your house. We shouldn't know nothing about it. N nothing. You need to fire everybody. Now, please, we're dispatched to Jim's home at 4.30 a.m. after Ursi was found unconscious in the bathroom floor with blue skin tone. Bruh, that's not a respiratory illness. Like, you're not fooling no one. But once again, there's too much information. We shouldn't know this. But then again, with these bloggers and TMZ, almost everything is pretty much public knowledge. But it just goes to show you, even though he a billionaire, he still got problems and a bunch of issues just like everybody else. I want to see how the NFL, Roger Goodell, handles this. I want to see if he got to pay another fine. I mean a substantial fine. Ursa is a repeat offender. There's always something with this joker right here. But you know what? If this was a player, he'd probably be facing maybe suspension or something. It's different with owners. The owner pays Roger Goodell's salary. So it probably won't nothing come out of this. Maybe a fine, if that. Also, Jim Ursay is nobody's role model. Not at all. And it seems like every time he's talking in public, he's under the influence anyway of something. I right, saw so the most polarizing person in college football who went to four and eight last year is catching heat because his son Excuse me, his sons, Shiloh and Shadur, was in Paris doing some modeling. They had an obligation. So they blew up the first team meeting of the season. And he's, boy, they're getting on prime. They're talking about favoritism, nepotism. For one, it was an obligation they had to fulfill. For two, it was just a team meeting. And those are his sons who's actually doing them a solid. Both of them. Both of his sons could be in the NFL next year. They decided to come back to help their father out. It's not like they missed a game or a pivotal practice. And plus, people got to realize the Sanders are close-knit. We all know first game of the season, Shadow going to be there. Shallow going to be there making plays. They're missing that meeting. It's not going to hurt them come September. So Prime is going to hear it, which is nothing new. The media is always looking for some negativity. And it, it won't stop. It's never going to stop as long as he's a high-profile head coach. Look, leave comments, y'all. I'll you guys later.